decided today to have a little look at all the um, old tuning levers and tuning hammers I've uh, picked up at various places, uh, mostly on eBay or second-hand shops, things like that, Facebook Marketplace. Um, some of them are more useful than others and some of them are just interesting things to to have around. Um, there's a variety of tips and heads. Um, so the first one, let's have a look at this. Now this is a, uh, it's got a wooden handle and a star shaped head. Um, let's have a little look at the size. Just measure right on the edge if possible because of course these are all tapered. So that's about, that was over nine nine mil um, so here's a tuning pin let's just see how that would fit in there that fits quite nicely um, but how useful this would be I don't know because uh, it's I mean it's it's fairly short compared to some of the others which we'll look at um, and this was made by J and J Goddard, who I think were a London supplier of piano tools to the piano trade, um, possibly the organ building industry as well for various products. That's that one. Um, now this is a similar. It's actually the same, really, same handle. Again, made by Goddard's. Um, but it's got an oblong shaped tip. So it doesn't really fit the, the square type of pin because this is for much older pianos uh, like Broadwoods and certain wooden framed uprights. Um, and this is about well, 7.5 mil by six, it's a bit raunched, it's obviously been used, um, about six and a half. So it could be useful because it's very difficult to get hold of um, a variety of oblong shaped tips for tuning levers now. There are ones available, but they tend to just be one size. And uh, I've read several people have reported that they're too too big and that it's difficult to use so it's, I think it's worth picking these up um, in case you come across a piano with oblong pins um, and here we've got another oblong shaped head here this is this is a separate piece which has been sort of peened on um, this has got some kind of hardwood handle a uh, little bit loose, unfortunately, but again, still could be useful because you may come across a piano that this fits really well. So 7.2 mil by six, it's very approximate. Um, but again, you know, a normal pin, it's not gonna fit in there. It's not got much of an angle, this one, so you probably struggle to use that on a grand. You wouldn't get it over the, um, the front there, so perhaps more use on an upright. Um, so that's that one. We've got this one, which is, this is made by Reynolds, R. Reynolds, and who are another trade supplier. And this has just got a very basic um, square square head there. Um, it looks like the chrome chrome's actually coming away as well. So not likely to be a particularly high quality, this one. Um, quite small as well. It's quite a large pin that doesn't fit in there terribly well. But I mean, this is, yeah, six and a half mil. It should be square, yeah, more or less. Um, I wonder if this was perhaps, oh, and it's got a loose handle. I wonder if this was perhaps used by uh, perhaps piano owners to touch in, visit, you know, in between visits. Um, 
It's a bit like the cheap Chinesey ones you get on eBay now. I would have thought very, very basic, uh, very short, not much use really. Um, there we are. There's another, this is a star shaped one, quite worn and battered. It's obviously been used a fair bit by somebody. Um, and this one, what's that? I mean, eight, mm. something like that. And this has got what could be described as a London style handle. Uh, the idea with London handles, I think, was if it was on a screwdriver, you put it on the desk, it wouldn't roll off as easily. But obviously that's not really a problem with this. Uh, again, quite short, a bit of split there. Not sure what use that would be nowadays. Um, we've got another quite nice, high quality, um, star-shaped lever with a... Lovely rosewood handle. I think it's rosewood anyway. Um, what's that one? That's eight, 8.6, something like that. So that fits. It fits quite nicely on that pin there. This is an oversized pin. Quite a big angle. Um, so it would be good for perhaps the top treble of a grand you need a bit more clearance to clear the cabinet that'd be useful nice thing uh, another one similar not quite the same angle a bit less there you can see that on the video but a bit, a bit pitted and rusty unfortunately what's it got there 8.6 8.7 there's no maker's mark on that one um, this is another one. This is uh, this is made by Erlandson, J. Erlandson of New York, and this is one where you can take the head off. It's got a threaded uh, handle. It would be a different thread to the ones that are similar to this nowadays. Um, but again, that's quite nice. Quite a nice thing. Uh, I have used this before actually, and. Um, it works very well to do a bit of cleaning up. But again, you might find this just fits a piano better than others. Um, not, a, not a huge angle there, perhaps better for uprights. It's called pianos. Now this horrible thing is one of these sheep sort of swan neck type um, Tight leaves. I take that one, which had. I mean, it has got a similar angle to this one. Actually, slightly. Yeah. Slightly more of an angle. It's longer, but it's got a horrible thin handle, and um, it's not easy to use. I think it's probably of no use at all, really. Um, wouldn't really be using that, it just came as a job lot with something else. There's quite a few of these around actually. You see them quite often for sale. Uh, this one looks really old. This is another slightly oblong one. This is 7.2 by 6.1. Um, again, it's not going to really fit her, fit very well there. Uh, and the the aperture is at an angle. Um, could be useful, but it looks like it's been bent. It's it's not got any angle, so you'd only only be any use perhaps on an upright. Wouldn't be very useful on a grand, I shouldn't think. Um, Interesting nonetheless. And here's what looks like a really old oblong shaped one. It's been bashed about and hammered and oh goodness knows what done to it. Um, and this has got, oh, that's 
three is quite big. By 6.5, not really being accurate here, it's just to give an idea. Again, of course that doesn't go, it's useless for anything like that. But still quite a nice thing, it's, it's oblong, it could be useful for something. It may be that there's a piano out there that this fits really well. Um, it's not very long, but chances are a piano like that is going to have loose pins anyway, so worth keeping around. Now here's a quite old, well, I'll say it's old, it's, this is made by G.F. Baker, again. This has got an oval-shaped hole. Um, that's just over six. The widest part there, 4.4. Um, and this is probably for really old square pianos that may have had pins this shape. It may also fit oblong pins small ones so a nice little thing to have could be useful um that's that this is a t-shaped sort of tuning hammer but it's not really a hammer because you couldn't use that to knock any pins in it may it may be for something other than tuning i'm not quite sure really it's got a very small square hole about 5.3 and five slightly bigger there but then it's a bit graunched um whether it would fit a harpsichord don't know really because it's too fat here um, that's quite big you know that's 18 mil but interesting nonetheless and here's a very typical tea tea lever or hammer um, which the idea was you'd use these ends to knock loose pins in. Nowadays you've got pin setters, which is supposed to be better. Not so likely to damage the, uh, the tuning pin so much. This is a quite a big one. The size is 8.3, so it's the biggest one. Nearly, nearly six. Um, could be useful but difficult to use these really quite a lot of hard work um, but it's worth keeping around I think just in case it fits something really well some really old piano uh, 